Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode, we will bring you our favorite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. I am so excited because I am joined by my dear friend, and colleague, we've been in the cir- same circles for a while now, Dr. Muesli LeBlanc. And I cannot wait for you to hear what she has to say. <laughs> we had a little bit of a preamble, we're like, oh no, we're doing the podcast now, we need to get, <laughs> we need to set this up. <laughs> so we're welcoming you all into the conversation um, that we, um, we're, we're having. So by way of introduction, I just wanna share a little bit about um, Muesli's um, bio. Dr. Mo, or Dr. Muesli LeBlanc, is a highly awarded and sought after medical doctor, holistic intuitive healer and coach. She is an author, podcaster and motivational speaker that has been featured in the media, including CBS, Fox and Shift Network. That's incredible. She is the founder of Holistic Health Healing, dedicated to holistic and intuitive healing and coaching. And as a master teacher of Reiki, neurolinguistics, and Akashic Record readings, Dr. LeBlanc takes a holistic heart-centered approach to healing that addresses the mind, body, heart, and soul by incorporating energy healing techniques with coaching to quickly and effectively empower women to transform their lives. (laughs) Welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Louisa. It's such an honor to be here. I love your podcast and I love you. Oh, thank you so much, lovey. I love you too. And I love our conversations. I'm so excited that we can share our conversation today with our listeners. And we dive straight in the moment we got on the, the call today. So if we just kind of circle, circle back, we're going to talk about self-love and that being the key to creating an abundance. And the reason why I was so excited, I wanted you to come on the podcast because I know you create miracles and magic in your life and wanted to share your vibration and frequency and your message with, with our listeners. Tell us a little bit about how you got to do what you're doing now, because I know your journey is, you know, is really unique. <laughs> it is very <laughs> unique. Um, I came from the complete up, up opposite of woo. The, the least <laughs> possible. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm a Ivy League physician, as you mentioned. And so I'm very much about research. Um, and, you know, I'm also very religious as well. So for many reasons, this was just nothing that I would have ever seen on my path. But I always felt a close connection to God and always felt like I had conversations with God, even from a young, from a young age. And, you know, even though I was in these very academic circles, I was the least academic out of all of them. And when I was really working in academic medicine, I had a reputation of like any patient who needed TLC and just a little extra loving care and (laughs) attention, like send them to Dr. LeBlanc, she'll figure it out. Or or whenever they couldn't figure out what was wrong with the patient, they would just send them my way because they knew I had some way to figure out and tap into what each patient needed. And so in those circles, I was the least doctor (laughs) of them. And I was always willing to try things that were not necessarily had so much um, research backing, but it's like, if it works, if it makes sense, then I'm willing to try it. And so my patients just got better and better. Um, But the thing that changed 
that got me started down the woo path is when I actually started having issues in my marriage, oddly enough, right? And so that's when I started seeing a relationship coach and I became a relationship coach because I had so much success with that person of, to help other people. And that journey of becoming a coach, and I, I'm sure you can relate, Louisa, like to become a coach and a healer, it really starts changing you from the inside out, right? I showed up differently. I saw the world differently. And I had an aha moment because what I realized, because a lot of the coaching that I was getting coached on was really about self-love. And before that, I never thought of myself as lacking self-love. I thought I was pretty confident. I have high self-esteem. I have all these great accolades, but I had to get real and realize that no, I really don't love myself the way that I probably should. And when I was finally able to literally look in the mirror and see the truth, all of a sudden the world, right? The world is your mirror all the time, right? But suddenly I could see that same thing in other people because it was like looking in the mirror and really being able to recognize and identify myself in other people. And I noticed it became the elephant in the room because all these patients that I had been seeing for years, a lot of them chronic pain, chronic cancer, um, autoimmune disease. What I realized was the elephant in the room was self-love. That we all were missing a key component of self-love. And I changed how I practice medicine. I started working with people on creating a self-love program to help them learn and create a habit of putting themselves first, having self-compassion, self-acceptance, growing in self-worth and really removing the lie of self-esteem because Mm -hmm. self-esteem is very outwardly focused. It's very, I'm great because of all these things. I have all these titles. I have all these achievements. I come from this family. I have this ethnic background. You know, I live in this zip code. I drive this car. But self-love is when you take all of that away and it's like, I love myself, period. And that's what many of us like have a hard time with because we're like, no, 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 I'm great because of these things. No, if we take that away and strip you of that, do you still love who you are? And that's when you really get real and deep and more and more women that I was interacting with were like, no, I don't. But that's a beautiful place to be because it's Mm -hmm. a growing point. Like if you're not aware, you can't grow, right? So just getting to that point was so healing. And I saw that most of my pain patients, these were patients I've been seeing for years. All of a sudden, when I put them on a self-care program, they would come back four weeks later and say, you know, my pain is gone. I haven't been taking my meds. You know, people who used to call me early to get refills, they come back with their pill bottle and it's like halfway full, mm. you know, they're, it was incredible. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's it was real 3d confirmation that this is actually making an impact. Mm. And more importantly, well, let's not say more importantly, but th- the proof for me before that was seeing the change in my life. Right. Like when you see the change in your life, then you're confident to try it with other people and share it. Um, And self-love is something that transformed my marriage. It transformed my health. That year I lost 30 pounds and my A1C, which has always been very borderline, like finally like got into a much more normal level, you know, um, in terms of wealth. um, I, you know, had tremendous uh, growth in that without, with minimally trying, right. It just sort of fell on my lap and I, and I will go more into how that happened later, yeah. but in terms of how I got to woo, <laughs> <laughs> being, a, becoming an entrepreneur and a coach, it just put me into all these different circles of going to all these different conferences and such and meeting all these different people. And I noticed by the end of the year, I was at a conference and everybody in the room was a woo practitioner, except for me. I was like the relationship coach. And I had an aha moment because I'm looking around the room, like, how did I get here? Mm, This is spooky. (laughs) (laughs) 
Exactly. Because <laughs> again, I was very religious. So I would have never talked to these people. I would have never. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, I, at the same conference, I was staying the night at one of the girls' homes. She's a psychic, actually. And I'm like sleeping at her apartment. Like, what? How did I get here? And from there, the following year, I actually went to Thailand and had a whole spiritual awakening. That whole year was a spiritual awakening. And ever since then, it's just. Um, oh, oh, I'm just literally covered in goosebumps when you spoke <laughs> about going to Thailand and your spiritual awakening. <gasps> it awakened everything. Before that, I had a spiritual coach that was like starting in January. So I was like bubbling and learning and growing. Mm-hmm. And then you know, cause she had predicted, you're going to be doing all these different things. And I'm like, lady, this sounds crazy. I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. Um, but when I went to Thailand on a spiritual awakening retreat, everything that she said I would do just came online and I just started doing it. And so it was like, I started being able to push energy out of my hand. I started being able to heal people. Um, Cause that's a lot of the work I do too, physical healing as well. And so, so between that, <laughs> the heart work, the spiritual awakening, and I had a past life regression thing, um, session, and that really kind of sealed the deal, right? Because I didn't believe in past lives. So that's a massive shift to go from right. that. To, but once you see a past life and experience it with another person, right? Mm-hmm. It's like there was another person there who saw the same thing that I saw and witnessed. So now I can't just say it's my imagination because how can we imagine the same thing? Mm-hmm. So it's like once you experience a past life, now you can't go back in and pretend that past lives don't exist. So it was a process of really having to question everything that I believe um, and everything that I value. And I still love God. I still have a great relationship with God. And that's still a high priority to me. But I had to adjust some of the things that I assumed to be true just because I was told that it was the case and kind of realizing that, you know what, my experience proves that that's not the case. And being willing to lean into that and have more divine conversations, right? So beautiful. So beautiful. You've really touched on something there. Because one of the questions I get asked, because you're an Akashic Record consultant as, as well as I am, is when people come who have a religious or perhaps a Christian background and are curious about the Akashic Records, but somehow feel like it might be wrong because of religious programming and and, uh, things that they may have been told, other people's perceptions effectively that they've listened to and then are worried that they're going to do the wrong thing. So thank you for sharing your experience around that because I know that, you know, I come from a very Christian upbringing as well and certainly really being able to allow your own discernment to come through and go, actually, this feels true to me that feels true to me it's not judging someone else's truth but we can all live in this pool together with different perceptions different things that are true to true to us does that make sense absolutely and I completely agree with you um it's been a journey and it's still a journey for me I'm not you know I won't say that I'm at the end of that journey right like I'm still challenging so many um, long held beliefs, but Mm -hmm. you know, when, when people come to me with those same concerns, you know, I remind them that, you know, the book of knowledge and having the records of wrong, like that's in the Bible. Like that's not, I'm not making that up. Like I can show you scripture that these books exist. Right. And they're called the Akashic records. You know, the Bible doesn't give it a name. They just call it the book of, knowledge, the book of life, the book that holds all these records of rights and wrongs. Um, And honestly, a lot of this woo stuff, it's in the Bible, Yes, right? Like (laughs) demons were casted out, like laying on of hands, all of those things are recorded in the Bible. And Jesus said, you will be able to do this and more. And so, you know, people don't like that or they're not comfortable with that. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be able to do this and more like preach and teach and 
sing. <laughs> but when it comes to the loose stuff, they're like, no, we don't think it applies. But no, you know, the, the Bible even talks about how spiritual gifts are like the different parts of the body, each one equally important. Some are more visible, some are more vocal, some are more, I mean, we could say more important, like if you don't have a heart, you don't live, right? But at the end of the day, you're not going to live well if you don't have a major component, right? So um, all of these gifts, they're, they're just gifts, right? And the reality is, is that we all have access to to divine um, intuition and inspiration. Like that's not unique to either of us. Like anybody can cultivate that. Um, some of us are built to be able to access it more easily, but we can all access it to some degree because we've all had that gut feeling, that knowing, that hearing that voice stop and then like a truck driving by, like, you know, and like yes. barely missing, like we all have access or having a dream or seeing something. And then mm. it's sort of coming to fruition. Like, so we have that and we don't have to be scared of it, but we do need to be responsible and use it in a way that is pleasing to God, you know, universal force, greater good, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, and that goes with money too, right? Because I know we talk about money on this podcast, but money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil and money is a tool. Mm. You can do good, you can do bad, right? Because all these foundations, they do lots of good, but they do good because they have the money and the resources to do it, right? Um, and many of the people who lack money are the ones who are cheating and stealing and robbing and killing. So it's not whether you have it or you don't that makes you a good person. It's the love, the greed of money and what you're willing to do for it. That's it, isn't it? It's the intention behind it that's absolutely key. And I think one of the things that I've really um, noticed and become aware through conversations that we've had in masterminds that we've been in, and also seeing with, with, uh, as, with clients as they're um, one of the fears that can actually bubble up. And I think, you know, this will feed into, you know, the conversation around self-love. It, 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 self-love is a, a fear around because we see bad people doing things with money, that what if I have more money? I'm suddenly going to become a bad person. <laughs> right. It's going to bring out something, you know, wonky within me because money will amplify your essence. Absolutely. And good people, I always think, are probably going to good people because everybody's got a soul and is, you know, it's, it's, it's all divine, honoring the divine within and everyone's journey, of course, is I think people with integrity, if I put it like that, are the ones that are going to worry about that. Yes. <laughs> that yes. Sense? I love that, right? <laughs> if you're asking those questions, you're probably not going to have a huge issue with it. Yeah. You're not going to suddenly go off and do something bad. <laughs> right. And yeah, I mean, it, it's being willing to think twice, mm. right? It's like, okay, is this really in line with my values or not? And if you're a person who regularly does that, it's not that bad thoughts or bad ideas or greed isn't going to come into your life, but greed will come into your life, whether you have $5, $50, $50,000, greed will be a part of your life, no matter what. And I think people think that when they have enough money, it's going to be enough. No, there's really <laughs> no ceiling. Like there's never a moment where you feel like I have enough. So greed is something that we all, it's an emotion, right? Like we will all have this emotion, just like we all will have anger. We all will have fear. Like you will have moments of greed, hmm. but if you have, like you said, integrity and what is your inner intention to question that and say, okay, but am I going to impulsively act on this? Or am I going to think and really make a decision, right? Am I going to be angry and beat my wife or kill somebody? Or am I going to be angry, maybe say something that I regret and then apologize? Mm. 
you know, or just go and count to 10, like, right? Like we will all have the emotion, but what you do with that is going to speak to your character. And so I, I think that's a great way to think about it, that money will not give you greed. You have greed now. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Myth buster there, you already got it. Even as an infant, we have greed, right? Like that's my toy. And I not only do I want my toy, I want your toy too, right? Like it is an instinct. Mm. But are you gonna tap into that, you know, two-year-old version of yourself or your adult aligned integrity into you know version? Yeah, so. so, so key. Because um, I think what, what you've touched on there in terms of are you tapping into your two-year-old version of yourself or are you going to become the adult is really allowing ourselves to have the range of emotions without making any of them wrong, if that makes sense. Because that's where we can take ourselves down a rabbit hole, which will have an impact on the self-esteem, of course, as well. If it's like, well, why am I why am I feeling like this? This is wrong. I shouldn't be all this. I shouldn't, shouldn't be feeling like this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we can kind of take ourselves down an energetic spiral, can't we? But rather than kind of taking that observer effect and kind of go, well, that's interesting that that jealousy's popped up or that greed's popped up. What is that revealing for me to then heal? That's self-love, isn't it? Of actually not being able to, to judge yourself for that, but actually going, okay, we're going to go on a little journey here and just unpack that <laughs> exactly and I love that you even package self-love like that right it's that's exactly what it is it's just creating a habit of self-compassion mm. self-accepting um, it doesn't have to be bubble baths <laughs> oh, oh. You so much more <laughs> <laughs> I know you mentioned something to me before we, we we jumped on the podcast around you had a year of a year of love and I was like Oh, what is this year of love? <laughs> Tell us about your year of love. You know, it's interesting. I had read this amazing book. It's called The Year of Yes by, um, uh, oh my gosh, of course I'm blanking on her name, but she's very uh, famous. She's a famous producer. And um, I was like, I got to do that. And pretty much it was a year where she said yes to everything that came in her path and how it changed her life because she was a no person. Ah. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to have a year of love that everything that I say, everything that I do, all of my intentions, everything that I emanate, who I am will be from a place of love. And so part of that was making sure that I was doing self-love practices every day. And it was every action that I took asking the question, is this done in love? So every email that I wrote, it's like, is this in love? Is this a loving email? And having to erase it and say, you know what? I'm going to change the tone on that. <laughs> I love that. So you know, much. every text that I send, it's just like, okay, am I including love in here? You know, um, every social media post that I did that year was with the intention and purpose of sharing love and really everything that I did, you know, and obviously the coaching work I was doing was helping to couples, couples to grow in their love as well. And really helping these women grow in self-love. And so everything, so every, everything, every time I spoke to someone and had difficult conversations, it's just like, how can I say this in the most loving and compassionate way? And so it challenged me because at first you realize I'm not loving as loving as I thought, right? <laughs> it's that self-check moment, isn't it? Like, oh, really raising right. the standard, really raising the standard. Exactly, right? Again, getting that self-awareness and getting that feedback loop. Um, but certainly by the end of the year, it became very much a habit and a pattern and who I became, right? And that year transformed my life, right? That was a year that my marriage completely transformed and totally got back in track. It was like the most loving and amazing year we had. In terms of my health, I shared that I lost like over 30 
pounds. I was actually featured in like a diabetes magazine even because they were like, oh my gosh, you had this amazing weight loss journey. And da, 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 da. And not only was it for me, right? I actually, again, because I work with patients and coaching clients, sharing the same information with other people. Like there's this one patient I had, she has um, a fat um, disease. It's a, it's um, so with that disease, the person has abnormal fat tissue and has more fat tissue than the typical person and can't really lose the fat tissue. And so it creates all types of issues for weight loss. Um, she was over 400 pounds and could barely walk, um, was miserable in her marriage, was just miserable. And I just said, let's focus on love. Let's focus on self-love and getting you to just be okay with yourself. Mm. And in six months, she lost a hundred pounds. Wow. That is incredible. I'm just trying to imagine what that amount is. I mean, that's, that's like so that amount her. <laughs> made her, so she couldn't barely walk. She used like a cane, um, yeah. or crutches. I don't remember specifically, but she used a walking device. She couldn't drive because she couldn't fit behind the wheel. You know, um, so a hundred pounds, what it translated to is like, she could drive again. She could walk without using a walking device, which now meant that she was able to go to her son's, you know, basketball and all of his sports games, which is the heart of what she really wanted and what she was really missing of not being able to be there for her son because of her physical issues. And she went from being a pretty nasty, <laughs> miserable person who every visit would just hammer her husband and yell at him and tell him how he was like a piece of mm. really hard to watch. Um, and I remember the last visit, they were holding hands, they were kissing and she was saying oh. he was such an amazing partner, you know, so completely transform her whole family. And she cried in that visit because she was just like, you've given me my life back. It, it wasn't about the weight. Yes, she lost a hundred pounds and she looks great. And, you know, she dropped however many dress sizes and all these different things. And yes, health metrics improved, but she got her life back. She was happy. That's incredible. And that's really the real measure, right? Mm-hmm. All these health measures, they're important. But at the end of the day, if you can't look in the mirror and be happy, what does it all matter? Oh, it's absolutely so true. And what a transformation for your client. That is just absolutely phenomenal. I I love that so much. Such a gift. And the key difference was we focused on self-love. Yeah. We didn't focus on diet, exercise, all of these other things. You know what? In, in uh, you really just and, and this isn't that. the first diet. You know, this isn't the first weight loss plan she'd been trying her whole life. Yeah, but to do it different, like let's start with the foundation of self love and build on that. And that's what I find over and over again with clients. It's like when we start with the foundation of self love, everything else falls into place. And that's why I say I get people happy, healthy, and wealthy. Because a lot of times they'll come to me for relationship issues or heart betrayal and healing of the heart issues. But when we create that foundation of self-love, they're happier, their relationships are better. They end up losing weight magically. <laughs> <laughs> Money just falls on their lap. Like it's just incredible. And it's like, it's hard to put into words, but it's yeah. just happy, healthy, wealthy. Let's make it happen. Uh, Absolutely, absolutely. You're speaking my language because I completely agree that it starts it starts with self love, and often people won't because of course our clients don't necessarily know that it starts with self love. They may not raise their hand. Hey, I want some self love. They'll be. I want to earn some more money, or I want to lose some weight, or I want to improve my relationship. But it ultimately does all start with with you with ourselves doesn't it and how you feel about ourselves I really love what you said about self-esteem when you take away all the all the components or what make up our self-esteem is without that do you love yourself right. that's like mic drop moments I just wanted to <laughs> <laughs> 
that because <laughs> I just thought that yeah absolutely absolutely key. and you know self-acceptance is similar right because mm-hmm. self-acceptance is really about knowing that you're not perfect because many of us are recovering perfectionists so it took me a long time to realize I wasn't actually perfect <laughs> that was awareness <laughs> yes and you love okay. yourself anyway it's like I love myself despite my mistakes, despite my misunderstandings, despite my shortcomings. Mm-hmm. It's acknowledging that you don't have it all together. You're not perfect. And you still deserve love. Yes. Oh, because so many of us grew up in households where we had to earn love, where love was conditional. It's like, well, if you get good grades, if you win the game, if you're a good listener, right? So we take that into adulthood, like, well, I'm great because of all these things. And it builds self-esteem. Mm. It doesn't build self-acceptance. It doesn't, um, because when we're in that perfectionist mentality, we're always fighting to be perfect, And it's something that we'll never attain. And so we never feel good enough. And even if we do, it's so momentary and fleeting, right? Because it's like, well, what else do I need to achieve to to be worthy of this, right? And it shows up in marriages too. It's like, you know, the people who do everything at home, never ask for help, you know, no one's grateful for you because you do everything and you won't accept help, you won't accept compliments, <laughs> you won't, you know, and then you're like, but I'm such a great, blah, 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 and, but nobody feels your love. Yeah. No, nope, because you're so busy behind the stove, behind the vacuum, behind the car, driving everyone carpooling and begrudgingly. I gotta cook this food. <laughs> Right. Clean up after yourself. <laughs> I've got to cook this food rather than how can I create this food with love? Exactly. Because we can yeah. get into that busy, busy task, task. And I know you mentioned, uh, um, you know, ex- your experience with burnout. And it's something I see with clients, a lot of clients, female clients, who high, high achievers, professionals doing all that stuff. A lot in the doing, aren't we? We're kind of busy doing because we love people. We're high achievers. We're, <laughs> we've got to keep up. And people pleasers, right? Pleasers. <laughs> we're, we're doing to please others. Yes, <laughs> I'm a recovering people pleaser. <laughs> <Same here. laughs> and it is catching that. Hang on, it, it is. It's always being able to kind of recognize that that essence is going to be there, and it's just bringing that back to kind of go. Oh, hang on a second. No, no, no. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> what that, do I truly that want? That is what. Um, really creating a self-love practice does Mm. because you create the habit and intention of making yourself a priority. Because for many women, that's something we have to learn. We've been taught to deny ourselves for everyone else. So it's like, we have to learn how to make ourselves a priority. And as you do that, then you get to say like, actually, that doesn't feel good to me. I, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. And you're willing to speak up. Yes. My needs are important too. Yes. So important. So important. And I know you've got an amazing gift. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. yes. I, we, we talked about everything. We didn't even talk about like finances. I mean, I didn't even share <laughs> the year of love that, you know, that year my income doubled without me even doing anything, but opportunities falling on my lap. And, you know, again, since then, you know, like, so I help a lot of clients too, like find ways to earn more income, not necessarily doing more, honestly, it's usually doing less, (laughs) right? Because of being willing to have those uncomfortable conversations with your employer or being willing to just show up differently in your entrepreneurial spaces to allow you to have the different opportunities. Um, But when you have self-love, you become a magnet, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're all about alignment. And and the more that we align to the high frequency of self-love, of just love in general, so many amazing and incredible opportunities just come about. 
So even the shift network, um, that just fell on my lap. Like I didn't go for it. I didn't do anything for it. It came to me actually. And so many different opportunities like that. Um, and, you know, I, I'll just share one other thing um, about how self-love is a journey mm. because, you know, when I work with clients, when we focus on self-love, the big part of that is creating, making yourself a priority and learning what it is you actually desire and what will make you happy. And sometimes that's to stay in the relationship. And sometimes it's to leave because you realize that you love yourself too much to stay in a place where you're not valued and honored. Mm. And so I, I know personally, when I started this journey um, and where I was at that point, like five years ago, you know, I wanted to stay and I wanted to make my marriage better. And I did. And we had an amazing marriage after that point for many years. And as of recently, over the last year, I got to a point where I loved myself too much to stay mm. because of certain things that couldn't change or for various reasons. Um, but, you know, I'm going through a divorce right now. Right. And so last year is when the process started and we were still living together. Our lease wasn't up at that point for the first six months, um, even though during that time we had decided we were going to cut it yeah. off. Um, you know, so at the first six months of the year where we were living together, you know, I made a six figure income and after I moved out and moved independently on my own. And again, I'm like alone. I have my son and my two dogs and I don't even know up from down and what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it, but just trusting and knowing that I'm divinely loved and I will be taken care of and, and working in the records is helpful too, because you get that confirmation that you're on the right path and things are all going to work out for you. But I went from that to the following six months of the year, earning triple the amount that I had earned the first half of the year. I moved into a penthouse, like my life is so different now. <laughs> I work less now than I ever have. I work two days a week even, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. it's not about that hustle, 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 because that's actually, that's actually a false teaching, to be honest with you, right? That's what the mm -hmm. patriarchy and society wants us to believe, because that's what they need to have factory workers and, yeah, you know, all these different workers to do all these different tasks. Mm -hmm. But honestly, a lot of times, abundance is really more equivalent with flow and ease. Yes. And when you can be in more alignment with that, resources just come. It Opportunities really come and you will make way more a lot of times, right? Again, it's a process to get there, right? It's if you're working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week hustling, this message is going to sound absurd. <laughs> <laughs> And I know for me, it, it, it would have sounded absurd like many years ago, decades yeah, ago. Me too. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of knew from an early age, I, I always had a motto in college, you know, steady hard, party harder, you know, <laughs> don't work harder, work smarter. Yeah. And <laughs> which is I'm giggling because I'm thinking of all the ways that my husband always used to laugh at me and just say, like, you're ridiculous, because I would always say when I was training as a physician, I want to be a housewife. And he would look at me like, I'm crazy. Like, he's like, you're in residency. You spent <laughs> all these years, decades training. And all you talk about is how you want to graduate and become a housewife. And <laughs> none of it made sense. I know. I mean, even when I was a doctor or like a medical student, people would say like, what do you want to be when you grow up? What kind of doctor do you want to be? And I would say a happy one. Yes. And they would look yeah. at me like I had three heads and I'm just like, it, it doesn't make sense because you're not happy. Like you want to do all this stuff, but at the end of the day, if I'm not happy, if I'm not rested, if I can't enjoy life, what does it matter mm -hmm. to have these titles, to have the money? It doesn't mean anything. And <laughs> oh my word. Okay going out on different tangents, but hopefully I'm throwing some nuggets 
just again, for, for everyone that this sounds absurd to, just take a deep breath. Yeah. Allow it to seep into your subconscious. And as time goes on, and as more life experience meets you, as you listen to more podcasts of Luisa's podcasts, you're going to understand the truth of that statement. Because I can earn more on a vacation <laughs> than I can do like making cold calls. Like, it's- oh, Lucy, this needs to be the new normal for everybody doesn't it you know rather than no it's true it. right Louisa, yes. like you, oh. I, you've experienced it right Absolutely. it's that feminine divine energy mm. Mm. we need both yeah we need that masculine it's the balance it. yeah we've got to take action like you know sending out the email with love um doing 3d stuff just to bring it into into the into the physical plane um, but when we can approach it, like you're saying, when you let go of that hustle energy, you're on holiday, you're in flow, you're, when you're completely aligned, you are magnetic to what you desire. And that's when the quantum leaps can come in, like you've experienced as you activate more and more self-love. I just love your, your journey so much. I feel that it's going, you're, when you share it as well, it's such an inspiration for everyone listening. And so that you show you're the evidence of what is possible for people, for, for miracles, um, um, you know, for really understanding the miraculous mm. um, when you're in alignment. Oh, I just love it. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just say one last thing with what you just mentioned. And thank you. Those were such beautiful and kind words. I really appreciate it, Lisa. Um, when we talked about taking 3D action, <clears throat> a lot of what holds us back is our lack of confidence and our lack of feeling worthy right? Like when we really dig deep, like, you know, we'll call it confidence. But again, that's like self-esteem. Like yeah. <laughs> nobody's really confident, right? If you are, you're probably a narcissist, right? There's probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably overconfident, right? But no, we all deal with lack of confidence. Like we're all building confidence. When you try something new, you have to grow in learning how to do it to gain more and more confidence. We all deal with this yes so again it's a falsitude mm. the real issue is self-worth am i worthy of receiving this opportunity and so you can have great things fall on your lap and come into your you know your sphere come to you but if you don't feel worthy you're not going to take the appropriate steps to make it happen you're not going to send the emails out. You're not going to make the call. You're not going to write, right? If somebody gives you an opportunity, right? That you still have to respond like on yeah. some level and do something. And if you're not able to take those next steps, that's when you'll often self-sabotage and ruin those opportunities or not even allow them to come into your life mm -hmm. at all. And so again, self-love is still the core foundation of like having that love to be able to attract and manifest, but having the self-love and self-worth to be able to take the next steps. And if you can really work both sides of that, then you can truly create a magnificent life where you're always manifesting and building and growing and attracting amazing opportunities. And even being willing to go out and make amazing opportunities happen too, right? So um, I, I think that's the key of how self-love is really the cornerstone that really holds up this whole arch that really builds the foundation to the amazing house that you can choose to build. You can choose to build a cabin or just pike a tent <laughs> or you can create your dream home. It's up to you. Like we have free will in this life. So again, if it sounds absurd, just ask yourself, what have I built? Do I have a tent? Do I have a cabin? Am I working towards a mansion? And, and I don't mean this in terms of finances, right? Not in terms of what does your home look like, but when you really look at the pillars of your life, your health, your relationships, you know, your finances or career, your spirituality, when you look at that in totality, does that look like a tent or does that look like a well-lived home? 
Yeah. So, and if it doesn't look how you like it to look, right? Because there's no standard. It's whatever mm. you want. Mm. Then the next question is, how is my self-love? How is my self-worth? How is my self-acceptance? Am I even tuned into my own emotions? Because many of us are not. Oh, that numbness is a... Yes, that numbness. <laughs> That numbness, yes, we have to really melt that ice around our hearts. And, you know, again, that's that stuff I work with clients on. But the gift that I have for you guys today, today is an abundance uh, toolkit, which you guys can get on bit.ly forward slash abundance toolkit, where you can download it and it gives you a step-by-step -step way to create a self-love, a daily self-love program. And this is perfect for the person who feels like they don't have enough time, right? But I don't have time for self-love. This is for you. Okay. So it's going to be an easy way to make it easy and effective, right? Mm -hmm. You got to make it effective um, to create a lasting and powerful self-love foundation, as well as some other toolkits to really get you into the energy and mind frame of thinking abundantly. Thank you so much. Thank you for that gift. That's incredible. We'll pop it in the show notes. And also when we send out the email to everybody to let them know that this podcast is released, we'll pop it in there so they can um, receive that. Thank you. That's really, really generous. And how else can everybody stay in touch with you, Moosley? Where can people find you? Um, the best place is on my website, um, unleashthehealingwithin.com. That's also the title of my book, as you can see behind me. It's hard with these like cameras. A dog. We're about to Vogue. <laughs> Always mirrored there. Um, and, and there I talk a lot about how to build a self-love program and really the seven pillars to building an amazing life. Um, it's also the name of my podcast. <laughs> so unleash the healing within.com and you can click on the coaching tab, which will have all the different ways you can work with me. If you just want Akashic, uh, Akashic record sessions, if you want to do a whole coaching program with me, um, abundance session as well. And on that website, you can shoot me an email nice. also at admin at unleash the healing within.com. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, thank you so much for your time and sharing your wisdom. I highly recommend everybody's hit re repeat so you can listen to it again because there's always so many layers to these conversations. And I, I really know that the, you were speaking to our audience there and uh, people will be able to receive the message <laughs> over and over again as they really embody that and move into amplifying self-love because it is something that we can all do and increase so thank you so so much Moosley that was just phenomenal uh, it was an honor to have you here I hope you'll come back and we can have another conversation <laughs> um, of course I'm so honored to be on your show Louisa thank you so much for inviting me thank you lovely thank you everybody for joining us thank you to all our listeners who've been hanging out with us today please do share this podcast with those that need to hear Moosley's message. We also appreciate you so much for coming back each week and hanging out with us and for being part of our community and, and sharing the love. Until next time, namaste. Lots of love. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.